Hey guys, welcome to Dave's Nano Tanks. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about diatoms. The brown, ugly diatoms. And in this case, the fuzzy kind. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had the fuzzy kind before. I've usually had that brown, powdery stuff that just covers everything. It, it's very common after you cycle a salt water tank where you're going to get this brown covering on everything. And it's, it's not a bad thing, although it's ugly and it's not nice to look at, but you're probably going to go through it. And it's just the first form of life in your tank, really, that is taking place. It's uh, a common type of phytoplankton. Now, normally they're, they're just unicellular, which means they're just going to be little dots. But sometimes they can form colonies. They can grow into ribbons and fans and cottony madness like you see here so uh, you'll notice too it's not on everything some of these rocks I acquired rocks from another hobbyist and they said they had some weird algae on them so I was like yeah I can fix that so I soaked them in tap water for a little while uh, very hot water then I left the bucket outside to cool off so it soaked in fresh water for a few days which is usually a good way to kill a salt water or a marine algae then I took them out and let them sit in the Sun for two weeks and every couple of days I'd flip them over so each side got a good beating in the Sun and uh, no I guess it didn't cure whatever was in it or by sitting outside in the Sun maybe they picked up something else some kind of dirt you know something in the wind who knows but as you look around, you'll notice it's not on every rock, is my point. Now, back there is a nice piece of tonga branch I have, and that has a whole colony of sponge in the back. And it's got a nice coralline algae coating on it, so that was definitely cycled. I brought that from my main display. And because it had sponges on it, I was worried about the feeding of them. So, of course, I was feeding, you know, the tank. Here I'm going to show you how I'm going to work with an airline hose. Now the beauty of an airline hose with this type of very thin algae is you get a lot of work time. So what I'm doing here is just siphoning, getting the siphon to pull them up and then as close to the root as I can I'm pinching off the tube. And if you watch the tube you can see a little brown yuck going by. And I sped it up a little bit because it's quite a long process. But as I go through the tank and I pinch it off, by exporting this, I'm exporting whatever silicates that it has taken up. So I feel it's good to anything that's, that you can pull out, and I feel this way about any algae, whether it be bryopsis, hair algae, whatever you're going to do to treat for it or help it, try to get the majority of it out manually. And a lot of times, you know, you can once you get it out manually you get it down to a manageable state where some of your cleanup crew may decide to start eating it so as you see I've gotten it down you know to pretty much stubs on the rock now, at this point you could go in with a toothbrush some type of brush and scrape the rocks clean but in my opinion, that's only going to put it in the water column for it to land somewhere else. And then you've got to deal with it somewhere else. So we'll just kind of keep it where it is. Maybe the cleanup crew can get a, get a hold of it from here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put some more cleanup crew in there. So you'll see in a, in a minute, I'm going to add some more snails and some emerald crabs and that's basically what you're dealing with here. Another thing you can do if you have multiple tanks is you could take all of your corals out and do a blackout. But I'm gonna stick with it with you guys. And uh, you know, guys who don't have another tank, we'll, we'll do it and keep everybody in there. Here's the cleanup crew coming in from the main display. See, I got two trochus snails right there. And how I do with trochus snails is once they're acclimated to the water, I even take another step. And I take them out and I put them right up and I hold them at the top of the water column. I allow them to attach to the glass and then go into the water 
as they feel they want to. You know, so they can continue to acclimate on their own pace. And they may sit up there for a couple of hours. And just kind of getting used to the water. So there's, there's two trochus snails right there. And that's my favorite snail. They look like the um, Astria snails. But the Astria snails, um, when they fall, sometimes they can't right themselves. So if they land on their back, they could actually die. Where the trochus snail can reach out, and, you know, grab some substrate, flip himself over. And there's the big crab that everybody saw in the old in my old nano tank. This guy's got one huge claw. He's got one claw bigger than his body. Uh, the other claw fell off. <laughs> and on the back, there we got that little guy. That's a normal emerald crab. And I got to keep my eye on a big guy because he's got that big clipper and that big pincher and. Uh, I don't know what it could do to my finger, but I'm not going to be the guy that finds out. You know what I'm saying? And then there's a bonus hermit crab also fell out of this rock. And I think there's a brittle star in there too. So it's all going to help with the diversity of the tank. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll keep you guys posted on the diatoms.